Great. <clears throat> so, um, oops. Thanks again, everybody, for coming. Let's do a little quick go around uh, of introductions real fast. Uh, I'm Tracy Silva Barbosa. I am the TDI fellow from Mass Development here um, in Attleboro. And um, I am tasked with uh, working with a wonderful partnership of community members that are interested in making the downtown a better place to do business and to live and to walk and to enjoy. Um, and uh, I'd like to introduce Heather Rockwood, who is on the partnership. Heather. Hi, I'm Heather. Thank you. I'm Heather <laughs> Rockwood. And uh, in my professional life, I work at the Massachusetts Historical Society. And in my fun life here in Attleboro, I'm on the TDI partnership. I chair the Public Space Activation Arts and Marketing Subcommittee. I am the chair of the Attleboro uh, Cultural Council. Um, I founded Jewelry City Steampunk Festival in 2017. I'm on a board committee for the YMCA, and I am on the council or the partnership that is trying to start a cultural district here in Attleboro. Um, Victoria? My name is Victoria. I am the director here at the Industrial Museum on Union Street. So nice to have you. Excited to be here. It's a good opportunity. Lizzie, it's your turn now. Hey, guys. Hi, I'm Lizzie. I'm the Grants and Administrative Manager here at the Attleboro Mountain Y. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, this this uh will be this recording will be available on the uh, Downtown Attleboro Business Association YouTube page, uh, aka Daba. Uh, so <laughs> if you look up <laughs> Yaba Daba. And um, if you uh, look it up on YouTube, it's Downtown Attleboro Business Association. This will be available today um, as soon as I can get it up until uh, the grant is available. So we can, you can, anybody can refer to this if they need to. So I am going to share my screen and um, Heather, please interject uh, whenever you can. And I would ask that anyone else, uh, Victoria, Lizzie, uh, interject if you have questions so we can really uh, make this worth it for anyone who's watching this video and might have some questions along the way. I, I really open it up to a conversation. Um, so let's, where did my, is it here? No, that's not it. So y'all can see that, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Great. Okay. So uh, here we're talking about the SEEK collaboration grant. Um, move this up here. Um, and this grant was created by the TDI partnership to um, foster collaboration in the downtown between um, its many partners. Uh, we would love to engage more small businesses in, in this process. Uh, <clears throat> we have a lot of strong partners downtown like the YMCA, like the Art Museum uh, that are used to doing events and know how to do those events. And we want to share that knowledge with our small businesses and really involve them in a robust way in uh, creating events downtown. And this this uh, grant is meant to do that. Uh, so I, again, I'm the TDI fellow and Heather Rockwood is the chair of the Public Space Activation and Arts and Marketing Subcommittee. We can both be um, contacted by TDI Attleboro at gmail.com. If you have any questions, you can also uh, call me. I have my phone number at the end 
of this presentation and I am available to answer any questions and so isn't Heather. Um, where is the advance here? Shouldn't I just be able to click this? Um, try the down button. Hmm. Did that work or space bar? Oh, I'm just tap, I just tap it. Okay. okay. <laughs> so here are the key, um, key dates. Um, this one was for the live meeting the other day. So uh, that's not today. Today is March 14th, the 9 a.m. recording. March 20th, we'll have another in-person um, meet and greet and information session at the Attleboro Arts Museum. Uh, Industrial that, Museum. Sorry, yes, Industrial Museum. <laughs> um, sorry, Victoria. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um, we you'll you'll be able to meet some of the TDI partnership who um, many of them will be applying to this uh, grant and have great ideas and can share best practices and we would love that to be an open meeting for people to come with questions and ideas. Um, April 7th applications are due by midnight and we'll have decisions of uh, sent out by early May. Is, is, are there any questions there? Nope. Good okay. Question. Oh, yes. Um, there's no paper application to turn in, correct? It's all online? Correct. Awesome. <clears throat> so, um, Heather, why don't you take over this piece because you you have so eloquently put this part together. Sure. Uh, just just for everybody's knowledge, um, I write grants in my professional life working in museums. I also write grants for Jewelry City, the Cape Cod Pirate Festival, and being on the Attleboro Cultural Council, I see the other side of grant work where you see all the grants and the level of writing and understanding of the questions. So from those two perspectives, I put this grant writing best practices, and I find these helpful in my life writing grants, but also when I'm reading through 70 grants and everybody's kinds of reads the same, um, it's really great to have concise answers that answer the questions that are asked. So this is this is what I do is I create a Word document with all of the questions just copy and paste right out of the um, the application online. That way it's less of a big deal. You can answer the questions, you can change it, you can edit it, you can pass it around to different people at work. Um, it's it's really good, especially if you have to get it approved somewhere before you submit. That way you have something to give to somebody else to look at. Um, I always tell people just to read each question carefully. Just really understand what the question is asking. Um, and then I put it below the next one, but answer the question that is asked. Don't give us extra information. If it's asking you how much is the total uh, budget for it, give us a number. Don't say, you know, it's this if this and that if that. Just say it's $10,000. That's my total budget. Like just answer the question that is actually being asked. Because if you give us more information, that's more things that we have to read. So it makes it more time consuming and more likely for people's eyes to glaze over. Um, and always, always, have somebody else read your answers before you submit. I read through things and I answer them and then I edit and edit and edit and I still have mistakes, grammatical, spelling errors. I didn't answer the question that is being asked. Always have somebody read through your Word document just to make sure that everything is the way that it, you want it to be and that it's um, in a in a way that's easy to read for other people. And my last one, and it, you'll see throughout this, I keep putting this, submit on time, put a reminder on your cal calendar the day before so that if you did it and you had it with someone else and you're waiting on edits, the day before you can start bumping people or just a reminder like, oh, I got to get that submitted. I got to copy and paste all of my answers back into the application. Put a reminder the day before it's due, so April 6th, just to make sure that you have it in on time and you don't miss the deadline. Thank you. Um, uh, for myself, I'll even lie to myself and that tell myself and put on my calendar that the due date is actually like two days before, just to sort of trick myself into getting it in um, with time to spare because uh, Heather, you're right. Waiting for collaborators can really be tough. So if you're if you're giving yourself a bumper of time, 
Uh, so you're not submitting it at the last minute. It always looks better. Um, even though like 80% of people submit like 1158 PM. <laughs> it's just, it's just the human way. And, and um, that's fine. It's just, it's much better to have a reminder earlier rather than a yeah. reminder at 1158 and you're out somewhere and you can't get to a computer and you're like, well, I guess I missed that. Yeah. Yeah. So um, here's, uh, we just wanted to give a little walkthrough of what the um, grant looks like. And uh, Heather uh, put this really nice uh, slide show together of, of the look of the grant. Um, this is uh, through um, Google Forms. So there's a link on the PDF that I have sent out to everyone. If you click on the tree, it will take you directly to the grant. Um, there's also other links in the PDF uh, that'll take you to the same place. So um, if you're having trouble finding it, again, just tdiattleboro at gmail.com and we'll share the link with you. Um, so uh, this is the first page. It Basically, we ask you to read it all first. It's going to give you a really good outline of what we're looking for, um, the, the basics of, of what the grant is trying to do. Um, and it has all of the dates of, of where we're going to be able to talk about it. And, and, um, and our next one again is March 20th. Um, should we read the objectives or what do you think, Heather? Yeah, let's, let's get them out there just so that if people are only listening, that yeah. they can hear them. Like if they're on a drive and they're like, I can get this done while I'm driving. <laughs> I respect that. Um, okay. Uh, objectives number one, collaborative activation. Uh, bring businesses, community groups, and event organizers together to jointly contribute to the activation of public spaces within the Attleboro TDI district, which is our downtown. Uh, successful collaboration should foster a vibrant and inclusive community environment. I think that speaks for itself. Uh, business prosperity, provide finan financial support to downtown Attleboro businesses for collaborative initiatives that strengthen their operations, increase community engagement, contribute to the vitality of the Attleboro TDI district. Uh, a good example of this was done by the uh, YMCA for the past two years. They did a uh, summer, uh, summer in the streets camp and uh, they had some kids a uh, group of kids going around to all the small businesses in downtown and and seeing them and experiencing uh, boba and making their own boba and and doing all all of these wonderful things and getting to know their downtown. That to me is just such a great event. I would love to see that keep going um, because in a in a place where families live like Attleboro, it's your kids that that are going to say, "Oh, I had a delicious waffle over here," and and the parents will be like, "What?" you know, I didn't know that was there. Um, so I think that's a really great way to introduce kids to, to what their downtown is like and, and therefore they can introduce their families. So and I just look. Um, I just want to say my daughter uh, did that last year. And for families that were inside the district, they made it free. And for families that were outside of the district, the only charge I think was like $200, which is less than almost every single camp in the area. And that was for a full week of like 9 p.m., 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. camp. So like it was not only a really great deal, but it was a great experience for my daughter seeing all the businesses. She got to walk around. She felt this sense of freedom of being able to walk around with like a bunch of kids and only a couple of adults. So I thought it was a really great program and having it free for kids inside the district, I think was wonderful. Great point. Thank you for sharing that. And yeah, it's just so cute to see them all walking around doing business. <laughs> Um, number three, diversity. Cultivate relationships between businesses, residents, and event organizers with a focus on advancing diversity, equity, inclusion, and access, DEIA, in all forms. Um, this is not a strict requisite. I know it scares some people away because it's new language to them. But what we're trying to say here is that we want you to get to know your neighbors. Um, and, and whatever form that means, I think that uh, if, if you're feeling a little shy because you can't speak Spanish and, you're, and your neighboring business is a Spanish speaking business, 
I say, you know, swallow that feeling a little bit and go in there and, and try to relate and, and try to include people. Uh, our businesses downtown are incredibly diverse and the people are so excited to do things. So I think it's, it's an exciting um, prospect to have more inclusion with the other businesses that are particularly immigrant owned downtown. Um, the description, uh, projects may include joint events such as pop-up shops at local restaurants, public art installations, public services such as health fairs, and community engagement activities such as festivals, as expos, educational events that mutually benefit businesses and the community. Please note that the grant recipients will be required to submit a written status report and financial update within a year of the proposed project. This is a standard practice. Uh, we, Mass Development, as the grant giver, wants to know that our money was used properly. And uh, we require that all grant recipients do a report after basically sharing photos of the event, uh, outcomes. Uh, we will be supplying that form uh, with your acceptance if you are accepted for the, uh, the grant. And it's pretty basic stuff. So um, I'm sure Lizzie's done it before since she's the grant person at YMCA and uh, Victoria as well. So, um, and again, it's not scary and we are your neighbors. We are here to help. So uh, I know it feels like, yikes, oh, am I going to do this right? You know, well, that's why this grant is local. It's purely local. Uh, it's given to you by your neighbors and, and we want to help you get through it so you can do more in the future. So if you have any questions, we are here for you. Uh, eligibility, open to collaborations between sole proprietors, individuals, nonprofits, community groups, and for-profits located in downtown Attleboro as defined by the darker area of the TDI map below. Uh, projects must be designed to strengthen community engagement and enhance downtown Attleboro. Uh, one thing I wanted to add to that is uh, we want this event to be based in the TDI district with TDI businesses and entities. But if you are bringing in an outside business from outside the district, that is also uh, okay. And we would love that because you are spreading the word, you're bringing people in. You're giving them opportunities in the district to use our public spaces. Um, I know uh, one potential applicant was uh, seeking um, a pastry chef for an event that they're doing and they're seeking outside the district, which is great because that pastry chef, I think does not have a, a public facing space. So maybe one day he'll decide to come to the, to the district. So th this is the kind of activity that we're trying to promote uh, would you like to add anything to that, Heather? Yeah, I think that as long as the event is um, located within the downtown and two or more collaborators are also located within the downtown, that having people outside, um, from my own experience, like running Jewelry City Steampunk Festival, like we try to partner with a few places around the downtown, like the Industrial Museum, like the library. So that's two entities right there that we would be collaborating with but then we also bring in vendors from the greater steampunk community of new england so things like that where you know you're at least collaborating with people downtown it's okay to bring in outside people because it makes a bigger better event and it gives people exposure to things that aren't just downtown but we also want them to be exposed to things downtown yes definitely uh, eligibility criteria, priority will be given to applicants who demonstrate a commitment to DEIA uh, principles and highlight how their collaborative efforts will benefit the wider community. Um, I think that speaks for itself. We, we want to really open up um, the communication uh, between our neighbors and our uh, co-small business owners. Um, businesses and organizations must have operations within the city of Attleboro. Projects must take place in downtown Attleboro as defined by the TDI map and take place before June 30th, 2025. Funds can be used for materials and supplies, excluding alcohol, tobacco, firearms, and controlled substances, 
expenses involved in grant related project collaborative efforts, including labor and staff time, subcontractors or vendors, collaboration costs with other businesses, community groups and event organizers organizers such as rental fees, insurance, and permit costs. So we're really looking to make this accessible. Uh, there's not a lot of limit to, to what you can put this money toward, which is really good because sometimes uh, grants won't pay for um, labor and, and we really want to uh, make this accessible. Uh, judging criteria uh, applications will be evaluated based on collaboration the level of collaboration demonstrated among business community groups and event organizers in the proposed projects. Priority will be given to projects created by two or more collaborators. So we would like more than two collaborators. Uh, more than three, even better. Uh, but uh, depending on your program, we understand that sometimes the program can be really big and your true collaborators are just three. We don't know uh, the scope of, of who is applying, so we urge you to apply, uh, even if you have to. So um, you never know. I just wanted to interject here that um, we were talking the other night about the depth of collaboration. So, you know, if you're saying, oh, I co I'm collaborating with um, Aleko Deli, so I ordered sandwiches and they're delivering them. That's okay, but the, we want to see that Aleko Deli is coming to the event, that they're active participants, that they are going to be there, that they were participating in the planning, that they are giving out sandwiches as well as, you know, a free gift later, or, you know, something where they're actually participating in the event, not just contributing an item. So that's kind of what we mean by active collaborators. Right. Thank you for, for um, lifting that up. Um, community engagement, the applicant's plan to engage the downtown Attleboro community, how the applicant will bring community members into planning and attendance of the project. Um, alignment with TDI goals, how the proposal fits into the TDI work plan for downtown Attleboro. Linked here, uh, this is a, a screenshot, but in the application, this is a live link where uh, we have um, a very simple document with the seven basic principles of our work plan. We've we've boiled it down so that you can look at it and understand where where our goals lie and how your event can can fit in with that. Um, feasibility: the clarity of the proposal, including detailed description, schedule, budget, and evidence of collaboration. Um, we want to know what's happening and be able to see that you can uh, organize that and project the idea in a clear way. Any questions, anybody? I just want to point out, I think we have the wrong date here. It says April 6th, but our due date is April 7th. I, th I think that's my mistake because we didn't have that date in there. So I put it in there before oh. I took the screenshot. So everybody know that we will change that and it will be April 7th on there. But if you're Tracy, you'll keep it April <laughs> so you don't mess it up <laughs> on your calendars it should say april 6th <laughs> keep that on your calendar um doesn't sound like i mean the the two ladies we've got on this call they're they're used to this stuff so they, they know um at least i didn't does, say april 8th <laughs> yeah um how does the money have to be divided between the collaborators like is there requirements on that or is that the agreement between the collaborators assuming like you know you're covering costs and materials, but in terms of if it's, you know, maybe the administrative side is, is heavier to one organization than the other, is that something I the grant is reviewing or is that just between the collaborators on how that money is? I would say that's between the collaborators and can be um, defined in the budget. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, I that makes perfect sense because there always will be someone who's pulling a little more of the organizational weight and we know that but in in a way we want those who are used to doing this type of work to expose some of our small businesses to how that goes mm -hmm. to um how you do this how how do we make a budget for this how do we collaborate 
um, and kind of draw them into the process a little bit so that they can learn on how better to have their own events and kind of break that seal, you know, mm -hmm. where, where I think uh, many people just don't think in terms of events. And uh, we all know the world of retail is changing and you no longer can just sit in your shop and wait for somebody to walk in. Uh, what, what draws people are engaging events and then they come back. So um, this is kind of the premise for all of this work. So that's a really great question for you. Thank you. Um, judging criteria. Applications will be evaluated based on collaboration, the level of collaboration demonstrated among businesses, community groups, event organizers in the proposed projects. Priority will wait. This is we... double, Tracy. Yeah. <laughs> I realized that as we got to this page, I was like, oh no, I doubled that. <laughs> yeah, I, I just, I'm like, I feel like I'm in Groundhog Day all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> in the link, um, in the application, there were, there are these two maps. The, the map to the left is linked to a version that you can expand and really look at the defined lines of the district. Although um, the TDI district has a, a boundary, we call those fuzzy boundaries because there could be uh, uh, a business just outside the district, as I mentioned before, that can can uh, work with within the district. And uh, we want... Uh, collaborations to happen, we don't want to block them from happening. So this is just to give you an idea of where we want this event to happen. Uh, we want to engage our public spaces the most. We would love for events to happen in Cuddy Court, in Balfour Park, uh, in the library, in the Y, in the Industrial Museum, um, parking lots. We, we really want to bring these events outside if possible, though not all of them have to be. As we said earlier, they can happen within a space. Um, it can be a series of events as well. So let's keep that in mind. And here's the, the basics of the, uh, the grant application. As you can see, um, the grant looks like this as you open it. And here again is our, um, our email. And you are more than welcome to email with any questions at all. And you just go through the, the application and, and click your answers. Um, I'm, I'm, should I go through each and every one? I suppose so, right? Um, I would just read them out loud. And that way, if anyone has a question on something, we can address it as you read it. So are you currently in business? If yes, um, answer the following questions. If no, proceed to applicant demographics. Next section, um, your business... You'll note that that's the only question that has the asterisk that indicates it's required. Great. Your business name and type, sole proprietorship, corporation, partnership, nonprofit, bi date business started, owner name, address, email. Uh, tell us more about your business or organization, a uh, link to your resume, your website, references, any sort of thing that you can link us to, to let us know who you are. Um, tell us more, wait, that's the same question, isn't it? Yes. Uh, do you conduct business in a language other than English? And we will uh, try our best to do translation services when needed. Um, these Google forms are um, auto translate. So if you can uh, switch the form to a different language if needed. How are you able to supply a tax ID? You can supply us with an answer here, an EIN, social security number, prefer not to say. And then you press next or yep. clear. I just Sorry. wanted to point out with these arrows that um, clicking next is the most important thing that you'll have to do on this application. Um, if you are entering something and you have to start from the beginning, clear form is the easiest thing to do, but it's in that bottom right corner, which is really easy to hit instead of next. So just make sure that while you're entering things from your Word document, that you're hitting next and not clear form because you will have to start completely over if you hit clear form even once. And to do that at the very end would be dramatic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but 
um, thank goodness you have your Word document so you can just plug and play, which is exactly. uh, advice. Um, so you know, the applicant demographics are basic information like name, title, uh, phone number, address of person applying or business. And you'll note that these ones are required. So the ones where we say like, skip to the next section, we tried to make it make sense. Right. Any any red asterisk is required, as many of us know with these online forms. Uh, your project title, come up with something snazzy and fun. We, we want to draw people in. Um, we uh, definitely want people to have fun with this. Uh, look For example, uh, just one that was last year was Shakespeare in the skate park. And everybody went, ooh, what is that? I want to go to that. And so, you know, a, a snazzy alliteration, fun name where everybody goes, what is that? I want more. I want to find out about that. Yeah. Yeah, that was a great one. That was such a fun event. Um, I got to dress in my 90s, like, grunge outfit, and I did step aerobics. It was just amazing. <laughs> That was so cool. <laughs> um, project location. As I said earlier, we want this in the TDI district, uh, That, uh, preferably in an outdoor venue, not necessarily. Uh, we want to know where you're thinking of, of putting your event. Uh, is the project location ADA accessible? Um, most public spaces will be. And um, I'm sure the YMCA, Industrial Museum, Art Museum, everybody can kind of vouch for their ADA accessibility. So um, answer that question, move on to the next. Does the location require permission from the property owners? So if you are not the property owner, we want explicit permission uh, shared by a signed document that says, yes, we we agree to let so-and-so have their tea party in our place. Um, the approval letter of the owner here, you would add the file. And I want to say right here, if you're having any trouble uploading files for any reason, you can send that file to tdiattleboro at gmail.com and label it clearly and we will be able to add that to your file. Uh, sometimes these forms can be a little weird with uploads, especially if your file is a certain size and, and, if, you're not, and if you're getting frustrated fiddling with it, which you shouldn't, but um, if you do, don't worry about it. We, you can send it to us that way. Yep. Um, does this location require any permits from the city of Attleboro? If yes, list the permits required. Um, within the application, the current the application has changed a little bit since this since we've created this slideshow and i have linked a wonderful document that our tdi subcommittee created called it, it, how to what is it called oh <laughs> how to uh i think i can't remember the exact title but how to run an event in attleboro basically right. so it's a pdf that kind of walks you through how to run an event and whether you might need a permit and who you go to and who you contact. So that uh, document is linked in the application. So you'll be able to see that in the description that we read earlier. I added it in there. Um, so please write a detailed proposal outlining the collaborative project, including its impact on public spaces and business operations. Uh, keep this description succinct. Uh, you don't have to, to really wax on too long about it. Uh, letting us know your key ideas and your key players is really helpful. And um, again, have fun with that. Provide short bios and descriptions for the core team involved. I think that's self-explanatory. It can be a little, a little short uh, description of, of who you're working with and, and their relationship to your idea. Uh, letters of support for all collaborating partners stating their commitment to the project. We want this so we have proof positive that your collaborators know that they're collaborating. Uh, as an artist myself, I, I come from the art world. I can't tell you how many grant applications people have included me in and didn't even tell me about. They're, they're like, oh, I'm going to collaborate with this artist and this artist. And, and I, I was like, really? No one asked me. So 
we, we don't want that happening. We, we don't want uh, false statements. We, we want these collaborators to, to know and affirm that they are being part of this and they are responsible for the event as well. And this is to, to save any stress on both sides. Um, any questions there or any, anything at all? Makes sense. Okay. Community benefit, who are the specific participants or intended audiences? Is your project driven by and or for a diverse population such as youth and or elderly residents, black, indigenous and people of color, LGBTQ plus, people with disabilities, immigrants, English as a second language, armed service veterans, et cetera. Um, that's pretty self-explanatory. Whoops. Oh, now it's working like that. <laughs> Additional materials, anything you want to provide us that would uh, help us uh, know who you are and your experience and or what you're planning on doing. Maybe you have a flyer that you made up real quick for the event that you'd like to share what it would look like. Uh, I think, any Tracy, can you go back one? Yeah. Oh, did I miss this? Go back another. Wait. No, you're going forward. Yeah. What is that? Go back one more. I think this is where you were. Oh, I missed the right column, didn't I? Here, okay. You were at planning and timeline. Yeah, planning and timeline. List by month the specific activities that will occur to implement your project, including the planning portion. So we want to see your timeline or how you're working with people, getting it together, uh, and what your um, proposed uh, rollout is. Uh, we do understand that things can change. Uh, sometimes permitting takes time. Uh, we just uh, ask for uh, you to communicate with us and do not be scared that it's okay if, if things don't happen exactly the way you planned, but um, we do want to know what's happening. So if something comes up that you have to delay or, or change, um, again, feel free to contact us and we will work with you. Uh, provide a marketing plan with details of how the project will be publicized. Include how you will credit the TDI district partnership in this plan. Um, it is a uh, common practice to uh, give credit where credit is due uh, with uh, grants related events. So uh, we have TDI logos that we would ask for you to put on your um, flyers and your and your promotional material. The TDI partnership also has a budget set aside to help you with marketing on our side. So we could um, also promote your event from our end. So uh, good communication is really important here. And we have all of those, um, you know, little little images that you would need to give TDI the, the props that it needs for giving you the money. And uh, we, we hope that you would do this for your um and for i know it was a, a couple slides back but i've just forgotten part of yeah. our budget can also include marketing right yeah yeah okay, cool. Cool. yes we'll we have a little where we will promote but um we understand you have your own way of doing it too so if we can piggyback on e off of yeah. each other what we want to do here well cool. um, the dollar amount requested, uh, you can request any amount up to $20,000. Uh, it's pretty simple stuff. Um, the dollar amount of the total cost of project, your project might cost more. Uh, and just let us know what the shape of all of that is. Is your project scalable? How would you scale it if not awarded the full amount? So, um, we're asking you to think about what happens if you don't get the exact amount you're asking for. What what other resources might you tap? Uh, where might you go? Maybe you have some money set aside in your own budget. Maybe you have another grant you're applying for. Um, this is just for our for our information. Uh, the budget. Upload an itemized budget for your project that includes project costs and project revenue. Here is a link to the downloadable blank budget. Please download, edit to your project and upload here. So you can use this wonderful, simple uh, budget that 
Heather has uh, offered here. And um, if you have your own, that's great. But this is a really nice way to just have it set up. Oops, I just tapped this. Okay. Yeah, I want to encourage people. If you already have one made up, don't don't feel like you have to fit it to the to this budget form. Like, just just use the budget that you already have internally. We'll be able to read it. Yeah. Uh, any additional materials? Uh, this is where I I skipped before. So, um, anything that you feel will uh, support your application? Uh, resumes, previous projects, uh, flyers, promotion promotional materials, uh, past events that might relate. Um, you can upload anything like that over there. Um, here is another, the next question is, um, my project is within the Attleboro TDI district. You better answer yes. <laughs> <laughs> Please clearly describe your need for this grant and how you would use it and how your project relates to the overall. Didn't we have this question already? I feel like we just had this question to the, anyway. I yeah. feel like they were slightly separate. So this is the eligibility, which is at the bottom. Mm. And there is a, there's a part at the top that's like, hey, is it like before you move forward, is this in the Attleboro district? Right. Please list all collaborators on this grant. We would define a collaborator as a partner who is taking part in planning, will be supporting the project with marketing through their channels and or will be on site the day of the project or will be in charge of aspects of the event. That's the depth of collaboration. We wanna know exactly how they're going to be involved. Mm -hmm. How is the business or project committed to DEIA diversity, equity, inclusion, and access, and how will the collaborative effort collaborative efforts benefit the wider community of Attleboro? Um, answer that to your discretion. Uh, any questions, you can contact us at tdiattleboro at gmail.com. Uh, this grant background, this grant is supported by Mass Development's Transformative Development Initiative, local grant to TDI local grant to the partnership of Attleboro Mass. The main role of the TDI is to establish collaborations, set a direction and support local businesses, institutions and individuals in downtown Attleboro. TDI works to concentrate economic development activities, resources and investments within designated neighborhood areas known as TDI districts to create a critical mass of activity that inspires investments by local residents, entrepreneurs, and businesses, as well as additional private development. TDI districts are mixed use with a commercial component, compact with a five minute walking radius or less, and are defined by a walkable, dense physical environment. This is our downtown and we have so many wonderful assets. We have the train, which is my favorite, I love hopping on the train and going to Boston and then coming back in. And um, we're, we're building up the downtown with the idea that this is a walkable, wonderful place to live. And we are building up the capacity of the downtown with the TDI partnerships help. And it's been really fun so far. And uh, lots of really great things are happening downtown because of TDI. Uh, one of those things is the beautiful festoon lighting that we recently put up. And it makes the downtown look so beautiful at night. And we're just trying to make this a wonderful place for our residents to, to live and stay and feel like they have things to do. So before hitting submit, make sure you uploaded everything you wanted to upload. Make sure you submit before it's due. Make a reminder for yourself the day before. And after you submit, a copy will be sent to you to the email you entered at the beginning of the application. So I'd say that's that's all she wrote, right? Yep. I just, with the arrow here, I just wanted to point out that submit button, again, is not in that bottom right corner. That bottom right corner is the clear form. Hit the submit button. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's a, that's very, very important. And it sounds like something that I would do. Like, Same. Not just once, but maybe like two or three times. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, click submit. By the third time, I probably just walk away and do it again later. 
here's a did sorry you're like breaking up did you say something nope good Oop, it sounds like i'm losing you guys uh-oh oh no oh you're um, you're you're still hey so okay. here's a little uh layout of the budget we've supplied and how you can um download it for yourself and alter it and if oh. you have Sorry. Yeah, sorry. I just wanted to point out and for people who don't normally use um, Excel spreadsheets because they're tiny little boxes that are very scary. Um, it's very easy to download and enter. So you hit um, file, you scroll down to download and this little box will pop up with Microsoft Excel and that's how you want to download it so that you can then um, delete all the lines that I've created and enter your own lines. And make yeah. sure you make sure you download it before you edit it, because if you edit it in the online document, everyone's going to see your budget because <laughs> that's for everybody to use. So download it first, then alter. Yes. Again, download it first, then alter. <laughs> uh, examples of additional materials. Only five uploads are allowed. Flyers or other marketing materials press or screenshots of media from previous projects like reviews, news stories, uh, resumes, uh, CV of lead project organizer, letters of support, and images of past projects. Uh, we would like any and any you have, but if you don't have five, that's fine too. If you have any questions, uh, here's the info. My name, Tracy Silva Barbosa. That's my uh, phone number. Give me a call. I will answer. And uh, that's my um, my mass development email. And you can reach me there or TDI Attleboro at Gmail. Is, is I'm also checking that as well. And so isn't Heather. And uh, being um, the chairperson of the mass cult the local cultural council uh heather has lots of experience with reading grants and supplying grants so she's a really great resource and super friendly <laughs> so don't be shy um and i think that's it any questions i think that's good for me this is a really Awesome opportunity. I hope people take advantage of it. Thank you. We we're looking forward to to the industrial museum taking advantage. Yes. <laughs> so I can't um, wait to see the collaborations that happen from this and the future collaborations that form from the collaborations this will supply. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. I've I've been fielding phone calls from people with great ideas there. It's so exciting to hear um, the ideas coming through and it gets me so excited. Uh, I love to just experience other people's uh, view of the district and, and how they would uh, highlight their own businesses and, and share the, the spotlight with others. It's just super exciting. So I look forward to seeing the applications. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I'm going to end the recording now, I think. <laughs> and uh, I'll see you. I'll see you on the streets of Attleboro. And on the 20th, if you're coming to the in-person event at the Industrial Museum, if you yes. want to chat with more people and find collaborators. That's right. It's a, it'll be a perfect place to meet uh, a lot of uh, stakeholders downtown that you could possibly collaborate with or just, you know, get to know people in the district. So Say thanks to everybody. Thanks again for joining us, uh, Lizzie and Victoria. And we hope that this video um, proves helpful to anyone else applying. Have a Thank great you Thursday. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody.